Hi, this is Mike Fauché, and thank you for visiting the channel. In today's video, I'll go through the hardware overview and the key features of the Ugreen DH2300 and the Ugreen DH4300 Plus, showing why these are quite possibly some of the best values on the market. Find out more about these devices and find out if they're perfect for your home or small business needs and watch the rest of this video. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help support the channel. Full disclosure, Ugreen did sponsor this video and provided all the hardware they haven't influenced the content or limited what I could say in any way. As I've been a fan of the Ugreen NAS products since their release, I use one as a daily driver, so I was thrilled about doing this review. As always, the results and opinions are my own. Before we get into these devices, I want to briefly discuss why you'd want to use a NAS over a cloud service, such as Google Drive or OneDrive. I've been using a variety of NASs now for almost 10 years, and many people have asked me why I go through the expense and the time to set up my own NAS device when there are free storage services out there. Though it's a great question, I honestly believe that the answer should be that you use both, but for completely different reasons. For me, it boils down to the amount of storage I need, the speed of access, and the security and control of my data, and of course, the flexibility to do more with my device. Most importantly, the ability to store all of my local media, such as photos, video, and to have a backup of all the PCs and Macs in the house. In my opinion, with the price range of these devices and additional functionality that I gain from a local NAS, there are not many reasons other than a second copy of data that I'd want to choose a cloud service over a NAS. With all that said, let's get into a quick comparison of the DH2300 and the DH4300 Plus in terms of hardware. As a never-ending debate of getting a value device such as these versus a higher-end device such as their DXP series, is based more on each use case. So today I wanna to focus on what you do get in these valued devices so that you can make up your own mind and make a decision for yourself. Looking at this comparison chart, you can see in terms of the drive bays, the DH2300 is a two bay device, where the DH4300 Plus has four bays. In terms of networking, the key difference is the two bay has a single one gigabit network port and the four bay upgrades that port to two and a half gigabit. Both are using ARM chips, but the Cortex-A76 that's in the DH4300 Plus is a significant performance and efficiency upgrade over the Cortex-A72 that's used in the DH2300, providing around a 40% lower power consumption in terms of the CPU itself. This applies only to the CPU and not the total system power, which is affected by many other factors. RAM also doubles in the 4-bay unit to 8 gigs of RAM versus 4 gigs of RAM that's in the 2-bay device. Both come with 32 gigs of eMMC storage. Both have one USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port and two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, as well as both having HDMI output for direct connection to your TV or monitor. Hardware compatibility with most manufacturers is not an issue and they do offer a hardware compatibility list for the drives that they've tested. However, I've used several drive types that were not on the list with absolutely no issues at all. Now that we have a basic understanding of the hardware, let's load up some drives and get this thing set up. The drive installation is very simple on both of these devices. You just pop off the magnetic top, remove the drive trays, and screw in the drives. Being a value device, these trays are not toolless, but they're pretty easy to install with either four to six screws. Once you've screwed the drives into the tool trays, just slide them back into the slots and slip the lid back on. The overall construction of these trays is actually pretty good. Though they're not toolless, they're pretty easy to put on and once it's installed, it's not really a major issue. The process is the same for both the DH2300 or the DH4300 Plus as they both use the same trays and both have the same type of magnetic lid. Now that we've installed the drives, hook up the power and your network connection and press the power button in front of the device. We'll give it a few minutes to perform an initial boot process. On this series, there are two ways to set up, and I'll show you both of them. The DH series has an NFC sensor, so if you find it easier, you can actually set up your NAS with your mobile device. 
To begin the install, just hold your phone near the sensor and open up the browser and allow you to download the Ugreen NAS app to complete the setup. In my case, I already had the app installed, so I'll just go ahead and open the app. Once the app opens, you should see your devices listed with the option to register any new devices. If you have another NAS already, it will show you that in the list as well. Click on register and give your NAS a name on the next screen. Create an admin and user account, and on the next screen you'll be asked to bind an email address to this device so that you can access it remotely. This option will be up to you, however in my practice it's always been not to use any third party connectors as I unify all my devices under Tailscale. I'll post a link to the video about Tailscale should you need more information on how to do that. So for this example I'm just going to hit skip and it'll begin the initialization process. I fast forwarded through the process until you get to the welcome screen. Here you can hit start which will take you to the overview of the screen and which you can walk through or just skip. The next screen is your storage wizard, which will give you some general information. And when you hit next, you'll have the opportunity to set up your storage for your device. Select the drives you want to use and the RAID type. As this is a two bay device, you only have the choices of JBOD, RAID 0, or RAID 1. If you're not familiar with RAID, JBOD is just a bunch of disks, which basically just combines the entire storage into one pool and provides no drive redundancy. RAID 0 is a stripe configuration which theoretically produces the best performance, but on a device with a 1 gig connection the performance won't do you much good. And it doesn't provide any levels of redundancy whatsoever. So my recommendation is to use RAID 1. RAID 1 provides one redundant drive, so you do lose one drive of storage, but you're protected in the event of a drive failure and you won't lose any data. I highly recommend using that configuration. Of course, if you're setting up the 4-bay device like the DH4300+, Plus, then I would recommend using a RAID 5. But we'll cover that when we set up the DH4300+. Plus. On the next screen, just leave the default, which will allocate the storage, and use the ext4 file system. And following that, type your admin password and hit submit. On the next screen, you'll see the status of your storage. Most likely, you'll see the RAID syncing. It'll create and format the volume, and when it's finished, you can use the device. However, be aware that the syncing process can take a long time. It can take anywhere from 2 to 40 hours, depending on how many drives, the size of the drive, the speed of the drives, and the RAID type that you choose. Your device is fully functional during that time, and you can use copy data, do whatever you want to do. However, it will be a little bit slower in performance as this task is running in the background. At this point, you can start using your Files app or your web browser to start adding and creating shares. One thing you need to do before you can access any of the shares you create is to enable the SMB service, which is needed for any computer, laptop, or device to communicate to the files. To do this, go to the Control Panel on the app, select File Service, and enable the SMB service. Before we do any kind of performance testing or do any more hardware comparisons, let's quickly set up the DH4300 Plus using the web browser instead of the mobile app so that you can see the difference. To set up via a web browser, type find.ugnas.com and it will scan your network and display all the devices it finds. In my case, I have the DH2300 that we just set up using the mobile app and my original DXP4800 Plus. In addition, we see that the DH4300 Plus currently shows that it's not initialized. Clicking on Connect will start this process. In the first page, you provide a name or keep the default and agree to the terms and conditions. Next is set up the admin account and on the next screen the option to bind your email address, which you can skip or sign up for. As I mentioned in the previous section, I usually skip all of this for all manufacturers. I'll fast forward through the initial process. And when it's all completed, you end up at the startup screen. You're shown some informational screens, which you can skip or review. And when it's done, you'll end up on your storage screen. Click Next and then Create to start setting up your storage configuration. Just as we did with the mobile screen, select all the drives, which in my case is four drives, and then scroll to the bottom and select RAID 5. As this is the best compromise of security, space, and performance when using three or more drives. Click Next and accept the defaults. 
Next is the review of what you selected and click on create when you're done. Just as in the mobile app, it'll create the volume, format it, and then begin the syncing operation, which will take quite a bit of time. You'll see a robot looking clippy type thing at the bottom of the screen, which will walk you through a few more settings, such as creating folders and providing some information about remote access should you want to use it. As I mentioned in the mobile section, there's one thing that should be on that isn't. Once you finish setting up your folders and remote access information, go to the control panel and go to the file services and enable SMB, which for some reason is off by default. If you're interested in a full detailed review of UGOS, I'll leave a link in the video's description to one I did earlier. It's extremely difficult to compare the speed and performance of a NAS unit with a cloud service, as cloud services are largely dependent on your internet provider and how much bandwidth you have. Typically, most U.S. households usually run in the neighborhood of a couple hundred megabits per second down and 10 to 40 megabits on the upload. Based on that performance, it would take you many hours to copy the information that I'm using as my test. I copied 159 gigabytes of data, and as you can see from the performance on the screen, the DH2300 copied it in about 28 minutes at 1 gigabit per second, and the same data was copied to the DH4300 Plus with a 2.5 gigabit connection in approximately 12 minutes. In comparison, the same amount of data copied to the cloud would have taken an estimated 10 hours on a typical connection. Despite having the value device label, both the DH units are feature rich, so let's go through a couple of the key features that many people will find handy. For starters, let's talk about backups such as Time Machine, and both the DH2300 and the 4300 Plus can be used as backup targets. Setting up Time Machine, for example, is pretty easy. From the control panel, go to File Services and select Advanced Settings, Enable Bonjour Service, and set your Time Machine folder. You may want to create separate folders in advance with a maximum quota size to avoid using up all your storage. Once you've enabled it, go to your Time Machine settings on your Mac and it will now show up as a target location so that you can back up your machines to. You can create multiple folders for each and set quotas for the, each device to keep things nice and organized. Both devices will support a number of apps, but if you're interested in running any Docker containers, you'll need to stick with the DH4300+, Plus, as the 2300 does not have enough RAM to support Docker. This also applies to Plex and Jellyfin. If your primary use case is media streaming and you really need hardware transcoding, consider the DXP series as the ARM chip in the DH series doesn't support hardware transcoding. The DH4300 Plus does support streaming, however, it will most likely be limited to local playback or videos that don't require a ton of transcoding. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a full video on media server applications on the DH4300 Plus. Something that hits all of us is the ever-growing need for cloud storage for our photos and phone videos. This is something that both the DH2300 and DH4300 Plus handle really well. Going to the phone app, select the App Center and you'll be given some of the key apps that you can install for your device. For purposes of this video, we'll only install the sync and backup photos and cloud drives. This will install the apps on both your NAS device and your mobile device, simplifying the installation process. Let's start with the Photos app. After it's installed, open the app from the App Center or the main screen, and you'll be taken to the Photos screen, which currently is blank. Click on the plus sign and grant access to a portion of or all of your photos. From there, select all of the specific albums and click on Upload. You'll be prompted on how to handle duplicate file names and the option to remember your choice, and the process will start in the background. Click it on the Tools option. You have some additional things that you can customize there, such as enabling album backup and going through any duplicate files that might have been created. Clicking on the album backup, you can enable it, which shows you the current process of your backup files. Lastly, let's take a look at mobile backup. Going back to the Ugreen NAS app, click on Sync and Backup. Here, you can set the options that you want to do. The first option is to set the background backup, which keeps everything up to date automatically. The second option is to choose whether or not you want to use cellular data for your backups. This is probably not a huge issue on a normal basis, but you might want to hold off setting that until you make your initial transfer 
and then enable the option. The last is to perform the nightly backup. Selecting the settings icon, you can see a summary and schedule of the settings that you've enabled. You can also pause and restart the photos and album backup from this screen as well. In summary, these two models are outstanding values in this price range. These devices allow you to take control of your data, whether it's to offload your files off your phone, cutting down your reliance on the cloud, using it as a backup, or some other hybrid solution. I've had a variety of storage solutions at home for years, and to me, central protected storage is mandatory. Though Ugrain has a full suite of storage devices across the entire spectrum, the DH2300 and the DH4300 Plus are extremely affordable and full-featured units, as well as being best in class in this price range. I want to thank the folks at Ugreen for sending me these devices to test so that I could see for myself how much value and performance you get at a lower cost. Remember to use the code in the description to grab 15% off until December 28th in the event that you want to check one out yourself. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.